Hello, welcome to Descriptive Grammar. Welcome to my study. Uh, it's a little unusual, um, but we're going to try to do this course in a different way from normal. Uh, it's very unfortunate that we were not able to meet in the first two weeks of the semester uh, just to talk about the course, but uh, well, that was my fault. There's nothing we can do about that now. So what we're going to do, uh, certainly the first half of the course, I'm going to try to do in this way uh, through online sources. There may be a mixture of things, so there may be some videos like this, there'll be some other videos uh, where you won't actually be able to see me, uh, which might be better. Um, we might also have some just, just pure audio recordings. There are also, as you know, on the website already, uh, there is the syllabus and there are the sets of questions which I normally use during the lectures to illustrate the points. Now, because this is a lecture class and not, uh, not just a normal class, you don't have to complete uh, the sets of questions and then hand them in. That's not the way that it works. The questions are there simply to illustrate what we're doing in the lecture. So what I want to do is you know, to make these videos quite short. So there will be uh, for each lecture, there will be one or two uh, shorter parts where we discuss the theory. Okay, And then the idea is that you will look at the questions. Uh, hopefully you will try to do them yourselves, um, or at least think about them. And then uh, there will be another video which will be me going through the answers. Okay, So ordinarily in the lecture, what I would do is obviously I would ask people uh, to answer some of the questions. Um, I would ask people if they understand, and of course normally somebody doesn't, so then it gets explained. Uh, so we need to work slightly differently, of course. Uh, I will try to explain things as well as I can. But if you have any doubts, any questions, uh, then you have a few options. So you can make a comment on this video. Okay, uh, That's kind of the reason for putting it on, on YouTube so that you can put a comment there and then everybody else can see what the comments are and other people can then say that, yeah, I, I want that to be explained as well or, or uh, whatever. If uh, you like, you can, of course, write to me by email or, uh, and I do recommend this if you have more serious problems, you can Skype me uh, during my office hours uh, which are on Thursdays at half past one uh, until three o'clock. Or if that's not a convenient time for you, you can Skype me at other times, but you'll have to let me know first so that I'll be available. Okay. Uh, so what I want to do in this first short video, we're just going to have a look at the syllabus and talk just about a few practical issues. And then the next video will be the first part of the course proper. So usually the way the course is divided is like this, that there are uh, six lectures and then a revision class uh, and then something like another six lectures and the final exam. It all depends on exactly how many times we meet during the semester. Maybe in our case, we're not going to meet at all. Who knows? Uh, but it means that the course divides fairly equally into two halves. The first half of the course is much more difficult than the second half of the course. There's nothing I can do about that. It's just the way that the, the subject works, and I'll explain that more as we go along. Um, so for sure, the first half of the course I'm going to try and do in this way. That revision class is normally a much more interactive class, so we need to look at different ways to do that. Um, and it's possible that we'll, we'll make a live broadcast for that one so that people can actually send in comments while I'm speaking and then get me to explain things. Uh, but we'll see how that goes, OK? Um, OK, so I'll just take you through the syllabus. If you haven't opened up the syllabus yet, you can pause me for a moment and do so now. Uh, so I'm just going to put the syllabus onto my screen. Uh, other stuff at the beginning we don't need to worry too much about. I just want to take you quickly through the topics. Uh, so we're starting, of course, from class one, as we haven't met yet. Uh, so class one, 
This is what we're going to come on to in a moment. Introduction, units of analysis, parts of speech. So in units of analysis, we're just going to talk about what it is that we're interested in on this course, because as you know, this is descriptive grammar, uh, but we're looking at syntax. And earlier, I think you had another a class where you were looking at phonetics and stuff. Um, and because we're looking at syntax, syntax is connected with sentences. So we need to talk about, a little bit about that. And then parts of speech. Parts of speech should be uh, a fairly familiar topic to you. Parts of speech, nouns, adjectives, verbs, that kind of thing. You're used to working with such things. But it's very important that you're quite good at working out parts of speech, and you'll see why as we go on. Okay. Then we move on to uh, sentence structure, talking about simple sentences. Um, so in class, that's in class two, we talk about sentence structure. Then we'll go on to simple sentences. We'll talk about objects and complements and what they are. Uh, and then we talk about compound and complex sentences. Those are sentences where there are uh, extra clauses, not just one clause. So some, one, one of those clauses uh, uh, will be a subordinate clause. And we'll talk about the functions of subordinate clauses. Uh, and there's also the, the last class in this half, passive voice. Passive voice is something which um, usually you will cover in practical grammar classes. Uh, but we'll just look at it a little bit in terms of the the type of vocabulary that we've been discussing in the earlier lectures um, so that you look at passive voice in a slightly different way. Okay, And then there is the revision and review class, which, as I said, we, we, we might try to make that more interactive. And hopefully, after that, we will be able to meet. However, to be honest, I'm quite skeptical about that. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, the, the second half of the course, we have things like multi-word verbs, which you may well know as phrasal verbs, but phrasal verbs are only one type of multi-word verbs. Adjuncts, conjuncts, and disjuncts are all different types of adverb. Okay, and then we've got a couple of classes uh, dealing with nouns, modification and compounding. Uh, and then the topics really at the end of the course are quite simple topics. Once you understand the beginning of the course, they're quite simple topics. So uh, they might not actually need a whole lecture. It, it kind of depends on how much you understand. So we've got things like theme and ream, ellipsis, um, and the very nice name, at least existential there, which is actually very, very simple. And then everything depends on, on timings. Um, hopefully we'll have time for another review of the course, and I very much hope that that is something we can do together. And then final assessment. So in the past, uh, the final assessment, by which I mean test or exam, has taken place during the last meeting of the class. Uh, this I've always done it like this so that you have it out of the way before you do your main exams uh, in the other subjects. Um, and it's, well, it's just easy, we're all together. We'll see because, of course, we don't know whether we're going to be meeting at normal class times this year or not. In the past, it's also been the case that some, um, because this is a, a combination, right, of, of people doing different languages. So in the past, we've had a situation where some of you were supposed to do an exam and some of you were just supposed to get a grade for the course. So basically what I do is, is one big exam stroke test at the end for everybody. And if uh, your course demands an exam, that will be the exam. And if it doesn't, then we'll just use that mark as your mark for the semester. So there is only one uh, mark for the whole semester as things stand. If it turns out that the shutdown of the university is extended, then it may be necessary to introduce some other form of assessment simply because, uh, well, if you're not coming to, to lectures, um, I have not, not normally, right, you have to come to lectures and you have to pass the, the exam at the end. So there really ought to be two elements to the assessment, but we'll see how that goes. It's possible that, that we will also do some kind of, um, I said, if we do a live broadcast, that, that, that we'll do some kind of, uh, you'll have to sign in, something like that. We'll see how that goes. 
At the bottom of the syllabus, um, okay, there are some suggested texts. So I need to say something about these. So the one, the 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 the, the textbook that this course is based on is the Quirk and Greenbaum, a University Grammar of English. Okay, and the one that's above that in the list, R. A. Close. University Grammar of English workbook is, as you can understand, the workbook which goes with that textbook. The examples that we will use in class are based on that workbook. So you don't really need to look at that workbook, but if you want more examples, it's just a book pack full of examples. So if you want more examples, then you can try to get it. Um, the textbook itself, Quirk and Greenbaum, is, would, would be useful if you can get hold of a copy. Generally speaking, you don't need to because I cover everything which is going to be in the final exam. Uh, but still, you, you may want to do some more, some more reading. Uh, I can't make any more materials from those available uh, on the website simply because my copies of those books are in my office and I'm not allowed to go into the building to get them. So... Uh, yeah, so I can't really add anything from that. The last one here, Downing and Locke, is a different course, okay, from with a slightly different approach. And this is a problem with descriptive grammar, that different books take different approaches and even use some different vocabulary to describe things. If you find that you want to read something and you don't like Quirk and Greenbaum or you find that my approach is difficult, you can try Downing and Locke's approach because they have a quite different uh, way of looking at descriptive grammar. However, uh, the, the exam is based on, uh, I said, the, the Quirk and Greenbaum book, and that, that, the way that I do it, right? So if you read something else, you, you can expect that there might be some differences. Okay, I think that's probably everything that I need to say at the beginning. Uh, oh, I'll, just, I'll just say one more thing, okay, which is that Descriptive grammar is quite difficult, okay? Um, it's an exam which you can't bluff your way through. You can't simply turn up and write something and hope that someone's going to let you pass uh, because it, it's, it doesn't work like that, right? It's like, it's like mathematics. There are right and wrong answers. And if you understand the system, it's very easy and you can get 100%. If you don't understand the system, you won't get anything. Uh, so it's no, it's unfortunate that we have to do it in this way and I can't check that you are coming and that you understand something. So you have to take responsibility for that yourselves. You will have to study or you won't pass. This is a course that people do fail, but people fail because they don't study, right? So that's up to you, okay? It's not, there's not a massive amount of material to learn uh, and everything that you need for the exam will be covered by me. The exam will be very, very similar to the sets of questions which you already have, which are already available. So there are no surprises. Uh, if you can do those questions, you can do everything in the exam. But as I said, you, you cannot simply turn up at the exam and, and just guess and, and, and hope that you'll get lucky or just think that you're clever enough to do it because the, the terminology that's used is quite, quite specific um, and you need to know that, okay? Okay, so I'm going to finish this first uh, prologue video and uh, the next one I will deal with the first set of, of theoretical issues. So that will be about uh, our units of analysis and parts of speech. Okay, so thank you.